forward to these each and every week, Thursdays, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, a chance for all of us to get together, gain some knowledge, and learn from an expert. So let me tell you about today's expert. If you were here last week, you actually were able to hear from her. She is Mary Ann Kellum, and she has a full career in business, uh, community service, gosh, philanthropy projects, and beyond. Now, if you missed last week, let me tell you, it was really good. It was what can a chamber of commerce do for you? And we talked about the different services that they provide. We talked about how you can take advantage, how you can make the most of your membership. It was really, really good. And the replay is already out on YouTube. Today's focus is this, what is needed to grow your small business? Everybody's like, that's what I want. I want you know, nobody's, nobody's trying to stay itty bitty and never grow, right? You want to, to keep growing and keep evolving. So Marianne Kellum is the president and CEO of the Irving Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I mean, under her leadership, they've really expanded quite a few programs. And I think what's most noteworthy for this particular group is the program helping people who are just getting started. So helping you, I mean, listen, you'd have to pay a consultant for something like this. You really would. You'd have to pay somebody to take you through this process. So that's something that she has facilitated. Also, she was in the financial services industry for 17 years prior to joining the, the chamber. She has been active in leadership positions in the Dallas and Capel communities. She is a state past chair of the Hispanic Women's Network of Texas. If you were here last week, I told you a lot of other interesting tidbits on her bio. It's so long, I had to pull out some different tidbits. Listen to this. Uh, she has been one of the 100 women across the state of Texas selected to participate in Leadership Texas. Also a past recipient of the Capel Woman of the Year, which is here in North Texas. Uh, but she has worked as a model. She has been in pageants. Uh, she won the President's Award for Community Outreach in 2015. I mean, listen, I could go on and on and on. What I'm trying to say is that she's very accomplished here locally and across the country, and she really brings this big amount of knowledge. And so she's here with us today. Marianne, I'm going to mute myself. I have my pen and paper to take notes as you are speaking because I'm ready to learn from you as well. And then on the back end of your presentation, we will chat and do some Q&A. So take it away. Well, thank you, Jenny. It's so good to be back with you guys. It seems like it was just yesterday, but it was a week ago, right? Already. Wow. Of course, last week we were in the ice. People say snowstorm, but it was actually an ice storm, correct? So we're working from home. I am actually in my office today. I welcome the sunshine, but it's still kind of cold. But um, just, just we don't want to really re uh, go over what we did last week, but I just want to remind people and those that may be new that one of the things that we have here at the chamber that I wanted to kind of preface of what I'm going to do today is the fact that we have a small business resource center so you can actually come to the chamber to find all your resources instead of us sending us or sending you all over the metroplex to do your business you can actually come here and say I need this specific need I have this specific need I need this specific person and we can connect you with that so we're very proud to be able to have that this is our first year to have this we actually started at mid-year of last year and it's been going really well but for today, everybody that has a business always wants to start, learn how to grow your business, or at least I hope you do, because um, if you want to stay in business, you've got to grow it. There is no one size fits all. So I'm going to give you 10 little tidbits of things that you can do. Now, there's going to be areas that you guys feel like, no, I need more focus on this marketing, or I need more focus on this. The whole thing I'm doing here is these are just some ideas of what you can do because everybody's at a different level, right? You have a really small mom and pop shop and you have someone who's maybe has already escalated to a to a, a nice size and then they want to get to the next level. So everybody has different needs, but for now I'm going to share my screen. So here we're talking about how to grow your business and we, we're talking about a couple of things that we want to go over the strategies. Um, one of the things that that um, is important to know as you start to to look at your growing your business i always make sure that you have a good business plan and that you're following your strategy so if you have a plan you know kind of where you want to go like it's like your roadmap and so that's that's a given and so with that then we go into now you've got to learn how to do sales so you know how to market uh, you need to know how to do your finances and you know how to do your legal structure one of the things that we found really, really difficult during that pandemic, and I mentioned a little bit about this last week, is that people were not prepared financially for a lot of the grants and the free money that was out there. So we want to make sure that your finances are in order, that you understand your finances, and that you understand your um, 
financials, especially. Some people would say, was I say, make sure you bring a PL statement and they'd say, ¿Qué es eso? What's a PL statement? So, you know, those things are important if you're going to run a successful business. So, next slide here. As a startup, you know, you've got a lot of different things to grow. And I'm going to talk to you about the, like I said, 10 strategies. The first one is do your research. Okay. If you want to grow your business, you need to know, first of all, what you're doing, where you want to go. To better understand your existing customers, you've got to do research, as well as your potential customers. So if you've got a customer that you're, you've kept for a while, you've got to know what to do to continue to keep that customer. We're going to talk about retention in a minute. But also, you also got to be looking at where you're going to find your next customer. Because if you're not, you're not growing your business. The other one is gain insight into your target market. That way you can see how your business can grow and change to meet those needs. So again, ask questions, do surveys, do research, um, research your competitors. You know, how many times do you go see what the, your competitors are doing? I hear a lot of times people come in and go, oh, but you've got too many bankers. You've got too many insurance companies. I'm like, guys, this is a perfect opportunity for you to leverage that, those resources and work together. Research what they do better and what they need, where, where you can maybe come in and do your part. Everybody has a different niche. So find out what your strengths and your weaknesses are and see how you can fit, fit in and, and do whatever um, they're not doing. So what makes them stand out? You know, what, what can I do to make myself stand out? So I think if you do that and start focusing on what you can do to make your better, yours better, it's all about research. And it, nowadays it's all in the internet. So no, no excuses, okay? Build a sales funnel. You know, we used to call it the pipeline. The sales funnel can make can help make your take your business to the next level. So thinking of the sales funnel as a customer's journey. So you've got your business and you've got your website, and everybody's coming in and looking at your website. If they don't come in and click on your website and dig deep into your website to find out what you're doing and actually buy from you a service or a product. You've lost them. So you have to get them in there so that they can go through that funnel. And so some of the ways that you can do that is offer discounts. Okay. Find out how you can get more sales, offer discounts, offer what they call BOGOs, buy one, get one free or get one at a discount. If you've got a product, if you get, uh, if you have a service and you charge by the hour, say for the, for the, this month, we're going to do X amount for X amount of, of uh, per hour. So find out how you can discount your services. Con contact information. Ask people for their information so you can reach out to them and email them and keep them in the loop and get them information as you um, grow your business. And the other thing that's that's I enjoy when people do this is ask for the date of birth, but not the year. Just the, the, the day and the month because nobody wants to give away the year. Uh, and their anniversary date and send them a note, send them a card, send them something that's even if it's an email, say, hey, you know, it's your birthday. Just want to wish you happy birthday or or whatever. You'd be surprised how far that goes in having that um, that customer feel like, wow, she's really going up, out of her way to make me feel um, good. So the next thing is increase customer retention. And this is so important. One of the things that we do, of course, we are a member based organization, so we have to get new members all the time, but we also have to retain members all the time. So one of the things that I always tell people is it, it costs more money to get new business than it is to retain business. So here it says it's enough. It's not enough to just get new customers. You also need to, of course, help your existing customers. Consider that it costs five times more to get a new customer than it does to keep a current. In our situation, what we do is we bring in a new, a new customer, we have to onboard them and, and tell them all about how the chamber works. We have to get them engaged so that they get become a part and, and get feeling the benefits. We have to then continue to remind them of the events and make sure that they haven't missed too many events because you get to start to missing a lot, you're gonna miss the, the connections and stuff. The next thing we have to do, we have to buy them the plaque. We have to do the ribbon cutting. All those are great business tools and those are great to do for a new business but guess what when that person person becomes re a renewed customer a renewed member and we retain them for the next year we don't have to do all that because they're already engaged they're already attending the events they already know what we do so now all of a sudden it's a, it's a given you don't want to wait till it's time for them to renew their dues or it's time for them to you know make their payment of whatever you charge for you to say, hey, it's time for you to do this. And they're like, well, what have you done for me? So if you're not doing something for them to get them engaged, you're going to lose them. 
So it's very important that you continue to do that retention. And here's some other ways, okay? Prioritize your customer service. You know, you always say you treat people like you want others to treat you. But in this case, you, treating customers right is what's gonna bring them back, okay? I cannot tell you how many times people have lost my business. Not that I'm a big person or big customer, but it's just how they treat me. It's how, what they do and what they say. Making sure that you address a concern. So if you're the owner of the company and somebody comes to you with a concern, listen to them and, and, and make a change, you know, let them know that you made the change. Um, I've actually had times when I've had to tell people, you know, you, you might be considering, you might consider doing a different business if you're that unhappy because, you know, the last thing you want to do is get caught in a, in a job that you don't like because it's going to show on people when you don't treat them right. Using a customer relations management system, that is, this is our CRM, and this is a system that helps you manage relationships with existing and potential customers. So we actually have our CRM that keeps track of all of our members, everybody that, that we've ever contacted or has contacted us becomes a potential, and we keep them in the system so that we continue to send out newsletters and, and, and communication. It goes to all of them because guess what? Just because they didn't do business with you today does not mean they won't do business with you tomorrow or that they don't know somebody that wants to do business with you because they need the service. So it's important to make sure that you keep those um, potentials also at the helm so you make sure that you can reach them quickly. Um, they also see help maintain customer information. So again, so the easier way is to identify, you know, other sales opportunities and um, be able to help them. Um, one of the biggest um, benefits that the data gets in the CRM is that everything you put in there gets stored. So you have all the information of what they purchased in the past, their buying habits, um, if they have a change in, in management or a change in um, staff. So all of those things, because next time you call, then you know who to ask for versus asking for someone who left six months ago or something, right? So that means you're not really with them. So the next thing, oops, I keep forgetting to turn this. Um, next thing is creating a loyal a customer loyalty programs. Everybody has customer uh, loyalty programs now, right? The more you shop, the more points you get, and then you get to turn your points in for other things. So reward your existing customers that support your business. Attract new customers. These are things that if somebody knows that they have a, a reward program, they're probably more apt to do business with you. And they're probably more apt to bring others with them because now I know if I bring somebody with me, they're going to get points, but I'm going to get points because I, you know, so it's that little game that we play. Um, but it also helps you get customers back that have left your business. So let's say that maybe 20, 2020, you didn't have any kind of program. And so you kind of lost them, but now all of a sudden they have, hey, they've got this great program. If you go in there and you spend X amount of dollars, you get X amount of dollars back and you get to, you know, all of a sudden they go, you know what, maybe I need to go back in there again. And you'd be surprised how many new customer you'll get from old customers. And launch an email campaign. There's nothing better than for you to be in their face, for lack of a better word. Um, make sure that you're using that email campaign to, to communicate with them. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, make sure that you're communicating with them. Send them specials. Send them um, our particular CRM has a system where if you have a special, let's say that ABC company has this big special coming up, they can send the flyer to us and we upload, or they upload it, but it comes to me for approval. And then it, when once I click on it, it goes to all of our members. So instead of you having to call every single person and say, hey, we got this special going on, come see us. You put that flyer together and you send it out and it goes to everybody instantly. So those are the things that you're looking for, ways to communicate with them. If you're not communicating with them, you're not keeping that relationship open. And again, it's people are going to buy from you because they form a relationship, not because you have a great product. Okay, even though you might, but still, so you wanna make sure that you're helping them. Engaging with customers on social media. Oh my gosh, that is so important because a lot of times people reach out to you on your website or um, maybe even through a messenger with questions, maybe feedback, maybe they have a compliment to give, or maybe they have a complaint, but we don't want those. But again, it's important to take time to respond and engage with them, you know? And if you take care of the situation, get back to them and say, hey, thank you so much for that bit of information because I was able to go in and 
get it uh, fixed and now we're back to normal or whatever the situation is, but just communicate with them and keep your promises. Okay. Follow up with them. If you tell them that you're going to follow up with them, if you tell them, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get you that in the right color. I'm going to get you that in the right size or whatever. And you don't think you're going to do it. Don't promise it because you're only going to make them upset and you're going to you know, lose that customer. So make sure that you follow up with them and, and let them know that you did take care of the situation. And again, like I said, don't over promise. Don't lie to them because it all goes back to bite you. Now, the other thing that we talked about last week is how important networking is. And so I'll continue to say you need to participate in networking events. This is the way that you create your visibility. And we talked about credibility. We talked a lot about what happens when you're networking and how you can grow your business. And I tell people when they come, if you're not networking every day and meeting new people, you're not growing your business. So make sure that you have enough events that you can attend on a monthly basis that you can actually meet people. So attend local professional organizations and you can find those just about anywhere. You know, find out what your your passion is, find out what your interests are and find organizations that have the same mission or have the same goals. And uh, maybe you guys have something in common. Um, develop your elevator speech and that the, the reason for the elevator speech is because you want to be able to have talk about yourself, what you do, who you do it for, how do I do it and why it matters. But all of this has to be done in 30 seconds because when you're in an elevator, from one floor to the next, it's not very fast, especially hours here at the office, but nonetheless. Um, so you wanna make sure that you can get that, that pitch, if you will, within that time frame. So it's gotta be very fast. And we practice that at every networking event where everybody has to introduce themselves and keep the, keep the information to 30 seconds. And if it goes over 30 seconds, we have a little buzzer that we, that we ring so that they know that they've gone over. So it's just a way to get you into the habit of doing it. Um, attend events and meetings um, with other business owners. So, like I said earlier, find people in your industry, but network with people that do the same thing you do and get ideas from them. And then go and, and meet somebody that is in a totally different industry. Putting uh, Put up a booth at, at an expo or a fair, a job fair, a business expo. Those are the best ways for you to get new business because people are always looking for they're always also trying to network, so they're wanting to make sure they can connect with all the people that are at those expos. Uh, and speak it as an industry expert for organizations. If you you have something that you're good at, share it with others. You know, go to the come to the chamber and say, "Hey, I have this program that I do for leadership development or whatever, and I would love love to present it to your organization." And guess what? You can become that speaker. So don't hesitate reaching out to us or anybody. But on your, on your elevator speech, let's go back to that for a second. So you wanted to say who you are, right? You want to say, what do I do? So my name is Marianne Kellum. I'm president of the Irving and Spanning Chamber, and we help small business either start from the beginning or help them grow. We do this through a number of networking opportunities as well as uh, ongoing training, webinars, and um, um, I think we're going to... Uh, Training. I can't think. You guys got me. Can, um, training sessions. I, I training events. I, I was trying to think of our power hours. I couldn't think oh. of the name. <laughs> but anyway, but this is that simple. You know, how do you do? We have a lot of networking events. We have a lot of, of seminars that we do through power hours, through Coffee Going Suppers. And so we have a lot of different things that we do. But that, you want to say something that people are going to go, oh, how do you do that? Or tell me more about that. But one of the things that I always tell people in networking, make sure you're asking introduce yourself but then ask questions to them because if you introduce yourself and the ne next thing you do you're talking about yourself the whole time you're going to lose them right they're going to find somebody over there oh you know what there's my friend i'll see you later and they're going to be gone so make sure that uh, you're asking them questions so if i introduce myself say jenny what do you do tell me about yourself because everybody loves to talk about themselves and then they they appreciate that but if you go in there and you control the, the conversation it, it won't go very far so, and we love to do networking training. That's, that's one of my favorite. Um, practice corporal social responsibility. And people, this is going a little above, like I said earlier, some of you need like the nuts and bolts, you know, somebody needs, I need, really need to know how to get more customers. I really need, how to, need to know how to market my business. But there's also things that people are looking for, people in the community. So do business with companies that match your own values. And as I mentioned, you know, find people that have the same interests, right? Corporate responsibility means you recognize the impact 
your business has on all aspects of the community. So you want to make sure that people understand, yes, I have a business and I do, I sell or I do whatever, but I also am interested in what I'm, how it's affecting my community. Let the public see what your business is doing to have that positive impact. So if it's something like some companies will get their employees to go out and volunteer, human, Habitat for Humanity, or, you know, doing, um, food banks, serving at food banks, um, doing anything that you're doing to help people is, is what people are looking for. Because then all of a sudden that elevates it to, wow, they're doing that too. They have time to do that too. So some examples of also of doing um, social responsibility is going green, right? The benefits of running a green business that goes beyond just, be, just having cheap utilities. It actually shows the public that you're serious about reducing the cost and what's going on in the environment. Giving back to the community, as I mentioned, and get your employees to volunteer in the community. Uh, there's a lot of large companies, banks and stuff that put their people out there every month to volunteer for different organizations. Um, producing sustainable products. Find out how, if there's a way that you can change the materials that you're using on your products that are more friendly, uh, environmentally friendly. So those things, sometimes you'd be surprised what that means to some people, more so than you know, just give me a discount on something. You know, some people take that very seriously. Awesome. Okay, interest is, this is very interesting because like I said earlier when, you know, people say, oh, there's too many bankers, there's too many insurance, there's too many whatever. But my best, I think the best way of us, for us to do a good power hour or seminar is to get a panel of people in the same industry and talk about different parts of their industry. You know, so everybody can cover a little bit of something within that industry. And so everybody benefits from it. So, so enter a, a strategic partnership with other businesses to reach a broader network network of customers. So if I bring my circle of customers and you bring your circle of customers and now we join partners and we, we create this amazing, let's say, workshop or expo or whatever, all of a sudden now look at the numbers of people. My people are networking with your people and vice versa. And all of a sudden it just grows. And so you're bringing more value to those people by bringing people they may not know versus just doing the same thing with your own people. Help meet strategic goals in your business plan. You know, sometimes we have these goals that sometimes are a little difficult for us to meet on our own. Find somebody that can help you with that. You know, let's do this together and we'll get there a lot quicker. We do a lot of partnerships with banks. We have Chase is one of our big partners. Wells Fargo is a big partner. We have Set National, it's an amazing partner of ours. We have a lot of other chambers that are our partners. So it, it's important to do our regional Hispanic Contractors Association. That's a huge partner of ours. So we wanna make sure that we're um, just aligning ourselves with, with the right people. But make sure that when you do that, you enter into that partnership knowing that you are able to manage that relationship. Don't um, don't just go in it with, you know, blindly. Make sure that you're able to manage it and maintain that effective relationship so that you make sure that, you know, you're on the same page. You know, you make sure that everybody understands each person's role and responsibility. And then next one is number seven. Consider franchising your small business. And I know this goes over some people's heads, go, I'm barely trying to get my company going, right? But my, the point is, if you get your company to a good point, consider starting another one and letting somebody else run it, right? You, you've got the blueprint for how you made your company succeed, then make sure that you help that person succeed in that company. That's also your company, but you're franchising. And so they're paying you of residual or however that works for you to still own the company, but they're the franchisee. Um, so that's important um, to, they open and operate um, their own franchise of your business and that increases the number of locations. So there's more people doing what you do and more you get more customers bottom line. So, but first you should know that there, some businesses are not franchisable, okay? So if they're not franchisable, then there's other areas that, that could help you, but Obviously, the fast food chains, the gyms, um, spas, those are the ones that are the most common, but uh, know that there's a lot of other opportunities as well. And then diversify your product and service, okay? So if you um, own, let's say you sell, like this particular one sold, um, uh, what were they called? Um, the screen for the for the phones, for the cell phones. 
And so you can only do so much of that. So then what he decided to do is go at another line of, of business where he added um, um, apps to the phone and different things that gave him a whole new uh, line of business. I met with one of our members yesterday who is a photographer and photographer does does great. He does quinceaneras and he does weddings and he does a lot of headshots and stuff. And so doing really well. And I walked into his place and all of a sudden I see all this wood and now he's adding where he's actually making his own picture frames with really quality wood that's really thick. And now he's gonna cut the frames to fit whatever size picture you need. And then he had the, the albums for the quinceaneras and the weddings that were just absolutely gorgeous, hardcover, colorful. So instead of just being there taking pictures, waiting for people to come in needing pictures, he stepped out and decided to create some other areas of revenue. And now he's like really, really succeeding in areas that he never thought he would in the, in the beginning. So reach out and, and do some diversification. Um, do market research to see if there's something that you can offer to, to customers to buy. Finding different ways to offer your existing products, like I said, add a little dimension to something. Um, bundle, um, you know, a lot of companies, sell companies like phone companies and stuff are always bundling things. Um, so again, just look, just do research and get out there and find out what you can do to diversify your, your business. Expansion new markets. If your business isn't franchisable, here I go again. If your business isn't uh, franchisable, an alternative is expanding your business through exporting. And that again is another totally different area. Something that people go, oh, I don't even want to go there. But sometimes people might be ready, you know, start thinking about going global. Start thinking about doing, you know, shipping across the country or shipping across um, the seas, you know, overseas. Um, there's a lot of opportunities. And, um, you know, because I think all of us at some point go on Facebook and go on our websites and stuff and buy stuff that's not made here. Sometimes I'm just saying maybe not always, but um, but that's 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 an option. You know, and then again, that's just a little bit more out there. But for someone who's already ready to get to the next level, sometimes that is the next level. So don't don't um, shy away from that. And measure what works and refine as you go, you know, take time and, and that's why it's so important to have your business plan and always update it. You know, check and see where you where you are. Am I on target? Am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I where, you know, have your strategy planned out for three to five years and make sure that you're on target. Measure what's working, measure what's not working, learn from your mistakes, take calculated risk. You know, guys, if anybody that's on this call that's in business knows that in order for you to get where you were, you had to take some risk, right? You had to start somewhere. And so take those calculated risks. And you know, sometimes you're not gonna win at everything and you're not gonna get everything right the first time, but that's why we have to have that plan, that roadmap that is gonna keep us focused and making sure that you are able to um, take those, those um, mistakes that you made and learn from them and just make it better. Uh, make realistic and accurate forecast and monitor your progress. That monitor it right regularly. And like I said, if you have the roadmap in front of you, it's a lot easier said than done. I mean, it's a lot easier to do. I think I went too far. Hold on a second. Yeah, no. Okay, so this is where I was here. But at the end of the day, starting your business is one thing, getting it to the point where you're comfortable and, and, and stuff is good. But then when you get to the point where now I'm ready to move to the next level, this is where all of this comes in. So um, when you get to that point, you will find that you possibly need different kinds of resources. And again, that's all here and we can connect to with those resources. When it comes to marketing, and I think that's probably the one I keep referring to because so many people come in for marketing ideas. You know, um, you have to have a creative mind a lot of times, but if you don't, it's good to find somebody that can help you. But in marketing, you know, are you marketing? Do you have a storefront where you're marketing, you know, someone that comes into your store or your office? You know, that's one thing. What can I do to bring those people in? And like I used to say, like we used to do, I remember when people in the olden days, I say, 
um, they would open the business, put up their open sign, sit back, cross their legs and go, okay, I'm ready to do business and wait for people to come in the door. Well, that doesn't happen anymore. If you're not out there knocking on doors, doing something that's competitive, that's going to, to do something better than your competition or do something that is going to be enticing enough for that person to walk in your store, you're not going to make it. So you have to go out there. You have to knock on doors. You have to introduce yourself to a number of people per day and you have to bring them in and you have to also be genuine so that they want to do business with you. Um, if you if you have those bumps along the way, you know, it's just part of growing up. It's just part of succeeding. And those are the things that help us get to the point where we're going, because every time you get up from something, you know what not to do next time. You know, and then that's when you also become that mentor to somebody else. You know, I always say, you know, climb the ladder, but bring somebody with you. You know, you've already made it in, into this business. Bring somebody else as a mentor. Bring somebody in as an intern and teach them the ropes. Teach them what you learned and help them get to that level. You know, a lot of times we find it mostly, I think, more in our, in our, in our family, in our, not family, but in our people that, we want to we want to take it. We want to run with it, right? You know, it's like no, I don't want them because they're going to be my competition. No, you want to help them so there's more of us. You know, you can't take care of the whole state or the whole city or you know by yourself. You have to have other people doing the same thing you do so that more people are helped. So that's how I look at it. It's just making sure that you're working your plan, making it get you to the where you want to go and be there for somebody who wants to get there, help them along the way, and um, and help, hopefully everybody succeeds. So that's my story for now. And uh, now I gotta go back to the end. So I would like to welcome some questions and if there's any specific areas, because one of the other things that you do too, and I'm sorry I jumped up, is that if you don't have a storefront, a lot of people are doing marketing online. And that's a totally different animal. So you have to learn how to navigate through that system and uh, do your market space mar uh, merchandising. So those are a lot of a lot of opportunities for you. So with that, Jenny. All right. You Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you for sharing your expertise and for just kind of getting everybody on board. Like you said, people are coming from all different walks of life and all different sort of phases. Thanks in business. So some people who have not yet opened a business, but they're just like, you know what? I want to elevate myself and I want to learn. And some people that are, you know, have been going for a long time and they really want to sort of get to that next level. So thank you for, for sharing all of this both weeks. I want to talk about the elevator speech uh -huh. that you're referencing. And um, per perhaps we can kind of work through this. And you did such a good job of explaining yours for the chamber. I'm wondering if we can maybe work through one that would make sense for um, Jenny, the ice cream maker. Uh, you know, what, what what somebody would say. So I, I know that you said that you want to do um, like what you do, how you do it, why you do it, why it matters, that sort of thing. What, what would that look like? Well, very simply, um, I always want to make sure that you have something that differentiates you from others. So let's say, you know, I'm Jenny and I own my own ice cream company. And the difference with in, the difference in my ice cream is that I I use um, I don't use cream. I'm just to say, for example, like it's vegan. Yeah, it's vegan. OK. And, and the reason that I do that is because there's so many people these days that are that are looking to be healthier and eat healthier. And, and so I found that this way I can really help them. So I'm, I've got a whole, there's, there's people that are looking for this. And so I'm, I finally have that for them. So you want to kind of make a little bit of dialogue, but to find the, what makes, what sets you apart, first of all. And I think that's the thing. And, you know, sometimes people say, you know, it, it's just basic old ice cream, but you know what, I'm out there knocking on doors and I'm bringing, I'll deliver it to you or, I have 40 flavors, you know, that you can choose from. I mean, whatever it is that, that makes it different, it's basically it. And, you know, who doesn't like ice cream, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's great. So you're basically saying who who you are confidently, then, you know, how, how you help people, how you do it, why you do it, why it matters. So the, 
So the how you do it, where I make the ice cream every single morning, I get up at two in the morning and make my ice cream. Why do I do it? We had a family recipe. It's been passed down. Our whole family's vegan and we found that there wasn't enough vegan ice cream. And why it matters is, you know, every Friday we do 10% back to uh, people in need or a vegan charity or something. Is that is that sort of what yeah, we need? You just, you just, yeah, everything that you can add that sets you apart, that's different, that tells them why you're doing it, what you're doing, that's a perfect example. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And so when we think about that, I just think this discussion is so important because I bet there are people who have had a business for a long time that just, you know, when someone asks what you do, oh, I've got a construction company. You know, instead of like really sitting down and maybe even take the time right now, you guys, even if you need to zone out from us for a second to take, because if your life is just so busy that you're like, I never do it. Okay, well, you're watching this right now. So maybe just sit down right now with that piece of paper and answer those questions about, you know, who, who you help. Okay, construction company. Okay, well, what, what kind? We specialize in fences. And then why well my family's been in this business for you know decades we have a passion for it we know how to source the best cost of wood because wood's really expensive but we've got the connection um and why it matters is because people can trust us you know some some you know perhaps some contractors aren't reliable but we are that's what makes us different that sort of thing i don't know is that sort of is that yeah, sort of go? Just, yeah and, and i think the more you work with it the more you listen to it record yourself and listen to it and see what oh wait i missed something there you know that's the best way to rehearse and practice is record yourself put yourself in front of the mirror and and just record it and then hear it back and say okay would somebody i'm talking to understand what i'm saying and would they be interested and so if you find that you know i could have said this then you go and refine it and just do it better so that you get you get it you know down and I also wonder how, you know, in every different industry, we have industry speak, industry talk, um, for example. And I find that sometimes when I'm looking for a vendor for something, like especially something like a marketing company, a PR firm, um, a financial consultant. I mean, there's a lot of these professions where you go on their website and you truly have no idea what they do. No idea. Because you're not in their industry. Like finance, if I'm looking for a financial planner, you go on and it's like, you don't even specify. I help individuals manage their finances in addition to their small businesses. Or I'm like, do you do people? Or do I have to be like a Fortune 500 company? Yeah. So sure. so can you speak to that too? Like making sure that, that their message is something that regular- And, and, that's, and that's a whole key, making sure that your message is understood. If you do construction, do you do- residential or do you do commercial? Do you work for a, for a big Austin company or do you work independently? You know, what are your hours? Do you do any after hours? Because I work every day, you know, till six o'clock. Do you ever do like after hours? Do you do Saturday? Do you do Sunday? You know, I just talked to somebody today that I need to come out tomorrow. In fact, you mentioned the fence that needs to replace my fence. Um, and I said either tomorrow at a certain time or Sunday at a certain point because I'm so busy. But um, but guess what? If somebody can make time to come during those times, they have a much better chance that I'm going to go, yeah, I'll go with it because you made that time, right? So, yeah, just making sure that they understand what it is that you do and define it to a point where, um, and if it's a specific, especially construction, because there's so much construction, there's so many parts of a building and a house that go into it. Um, define what it is that you do. Yeah, because the person hiring you may not know. It's like, yeah, they they need that thing done, but if they really knew about it, they may do it themselves. You know, they they may not know what they're looking for. So yeah, be be specific in that. You know, as much as you can be, I guess, in that thirty seconds right. that you're doing. Right. <laughs> I, I love you the, the. But you want to start the dialogue, though, Jenny. You know, you, your thirty seconds is just that intro to make them thinking oh okay and let them ask questions and then start the dialogue and and maybe you can help each other who knows but yeah yes i, I love that okay jetting over to a totally different topic which is actually something i don't think we have talked about in any I and mean, we've done so many sessions and we've talked to so many different experts and um Listen, we've all earned our little mini business degrees here <laughs> to watch these sessions. But something that we, we've talked about buying into a franchise, like 
finding, you know, the gym franchise or something and, and becoming a franchisee. We've never talked about becoming the franchisor. I think that's the right term. Is that the correct term? Franchisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah, but the franchisee is going to be someone who wants to buy that business and maybe has expertise in that business. And sometimes it's it's a lot less expensive to buy from a franchisee or a franch franchisor than to st go start your own business, right? To start from scratch. So if 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 Alpha Graphics has the the blueprint to make a successful printing company, why don't I just go and franchise that company versus me starting all over again? Correct. So that's that's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, just from the franchisor as the owner of the business, just the idea of just instead of you having to grow this business, now you can expand into more of that business. So instead of just having this one business that you have to keep building, 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 you can now go across and start building other um, companies of the same kind. And now you're getting customers from this area, customers from that area, and it just becomes, you know, that's how people become wealthy. <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's a really good Models, idea. You know, look at all this. Yeah. I'm like, we should have talked about that more in, in in these because, you know, why not think of yourself as being that big? Why not think that your business is something that somebody else would want to run? Um, and I think that sometimes the point A to point B is like, well, like my muffin shop isn't going to be McDonald's, so why franchise it? No, you. what you said that hit me so hard was one more. Like, oh, why not let somebody else franchise your business? So you weren't saying, okay, you know, your donut shop, all of a sudden you have to figure out a way to get, you know, a thousand people to, Bigger. Open. you're yeah. just saying like, okay, start with the one and then build on that. And I think that's like easier. And, and I guess it depends on your mindset, right? For me, I'm like, okay, that's easier to digest. Yeah. And there's people out there looking for these opportunities too. I had, I have a, a client um, that's a restaurant here in Irving and she's a Mediterranean restaurant. It's small. You know, you go and it's got a sitting area. It's, it's it's big enough that they do good business for lunch and dinner. But she decided during that pandemic, I remember they were struggling. They were really struggling. In fact, we gave them one of our grants when we got the grants from the United States Hispanic Chamber to give to small business. And they received one of our grants. And uh, she was so grateful for them for what she got. But now she has gone and expanded an, to another franchise in Plano. And another one, and I cannot remember where she told me the other other one was, to be honest with you. But there's now she's got three just from that one little restaurant and that she struggled with during that pandemic that she came out of it and she said, you know what, let's go do this again. And they, and they did it. And they're now they're at three restaurants, just that small. Wow. Yeah. And that was not that long ago. Well, 2020. 2020, they struggled. We gave them a small grant to help them through, just to help them with payroll, mind you. Yeah. And um, they came out of it, and I, I'm sure they got, you know, the PPPs and all the stuff that the businesses got, which is great. But guess what? They put that to use and went and opened up new, new, more, more stores, more restaurants. Did you notice with those loans that some businesses really put them to use, and some businesses used them to not work in their business? Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Those are you, you have that in anything you do. You know, you're gonna have those that are going oh. to be successful because they know they follow the rules, if you will, and you have those that, you know, do it for the wrong reason and they won't be around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So when when we when we look at this, you know, idea of okay, we have a small business and we want to expand. Um, I think the struggle in the beginning is like, it's all so busy. It's all so time consuming. So doing things like networking events can feel like, oh gosh, I just want to sleep. Like I, I just, I just need to go into my cocoon because I've been working 12 hour days. What do you say to that person who's in that mode? Oh my gosh. You know, and that's why we have the three different times of the, of the day of the month. So could sometimes, sometimes somebody goes into work and they have to be able to do something before they get to work. Cause once they get there, they're not going to leave. Right. It's not, not, not going to happen. So they can stop in the morning and then you have those in the evening that they have to do it after they've locked their door. And then you have those that have to stop to eat. But my point is that you, if you're not finding time, you know, have a cup of coffee to buy you another hour and a half 
to go out and stop and talk to somebody, you know, just pick up cards and say, hey, you know, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I just wanted to stop by and, and see who I could meet. And I'd love to sit with you. And then the other thing that I say, and that situation, especially if you don't have a lot of time because you're exhausted and you need to get home. But one of the biggest things that I see is when people go network and they get all these cards and then they don't follow up with them. I mean, so they're lucky if somebody calls them and says, hey, I met you at the network. You want to grab a cup of coffee? Let's talk about our business. But if you're not doing that, you're wasting your time. Why are you networking? Go go, go home and go to bed if that's what you're going to do, you know. But you have to follow up with them. And even if it's like just a little, you know, hey, it was great meeting you tonight. Let's get together next week. I'd love to take you for a cup of coffee, lunch, whatever. Keep it simple. I'll come to your office. Come to my office. Let's just sit down and see how we can let's see how we can partner let's see what we can do together let's see how i can help you and you can and we can help each other you know it's not almost like well, let's see what you can do for me but let's what can i help you with it's amazing what happens when you ask somebody what can i help you with i know i know we're in our in this together and you got your business like but what can i help you? how can i connect you who can i connect you with you know what those people are going to open up and they're going to do the same for you totally you yeah i love the way that you phrased that you said you said, what, what can I do to help you and how can we work together? Because it's like, obviously they know that you're in business too. You've got to, you know, do well too. So there's, there's gotta be some sort of exchange, but you're leading with talking about them. Um, gosh, I just experienced that in such an opposite way. I work in media. So people send pitches all the time. PR companies will send pitches. Well, they sent a pitch for a restaurant. You know, we want this restaurant to be on the air. And I wrote back and said, great, let's do it. Um, and they wrote back and said, oh, never mind. I just found out that it's moving to a different city. So we're no longer offering that because they were working on the behalf of that city to get PR and publicity for that city. And it's like, probably we would have had a better relationship if they had said, they're moving outside the city. They're not going to be our client, but let me connect you to so you can still do it. And I've got a bunch of other good restaurants too. It was so interesting because I'm like, wow, this is just such a, like a selfish heart sort of coming yeah, forward. Yeah. <laughs> and, at the knees right quick, <laughs> right away. It's like, yeah, okay. so I was like, no, okay. You know, and then they said, oh, let me tell you about these other ones. But it's like, no, you should have still made that connection with that time. It. So yeah. it's just sort of, um, it's sort of just an, an, an interesting uh, scenario that people deal with. Now, at those events, keeping the cards, following up. And we talked about this a little bit, but, um, when it comes to, you know, doing these deals, if somebody's like, oh gosh, with my shop, um, let's do, let's say they have a cocktail mixer. Like they created their own margarita mixer and they want to, you know, have collaborations. What would a conversation like that go if somebody's like, I just created this and I don't even know how to, you know, make a collaboration with somebody. Maybe they need to collaborate with a tequila brand or something. And and that's and that's exactly right. It's like first of all, let's get you let's get you an audience. Let's get you in front of people who are going to taste it. For instance, you know what is it that you need? Do you have the tequila? Do you have the whatever? I don't even know what goes into it, but the triple sec or the whatever. You know, I've got this company that has an amazing um, sauce, grenadine, whatever. The, I don't know. I drink tequila straight, so I don't know what you put in there. It's just like lime juice, okay? Something. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so they'll be a great let me connect you with them and then let's do this event where i can bring in our members and i can bring in 30 40 people uh, at least to start you off and see what kind of response you get and then from that response you know how to go from there what do we need to change and start with a small a small group but yeah it's always about connecting with what they need so if they need a good tequila brand connect you with them you know i know george Strait. no i'm just kidding uh, i mean there's a lot you know and we have so many restaurants here that do a lot with with the um the liquor industry that will connect us with anything anybody that we need and that's a good thing about our relationship with with our people with our our restaurants and and whatnot they don't hesitate saying um, we had a, an event with mexican sugar when they opened up that they created a drink for our chamber for our mixer and it was called Como La Flor, and it had uh, it was very strong. I'll tell you that. But then they put the fl the flower on top, and that be that became that they have a signature drink now that's called Como La Flor. But it's those kinds of things that you know, it's to be able to explore new new things and stuff, and being able to have an audience that can come in and 
and tell you, yeah, yay or nay, you know, hey, maybe if you did this, or maybe if we did that or whatever. You want, I always want to get that criticism, whether it's good or bad, you know, because it's only going to make you better. Yeah, to be open to hearing it, right? Yeah, the, so true. Very good advice. You referenced earlier that business that caught a grant during a tough time and is now thriving. I think you said they had three different locations. During those tough times, when, I mean, is there ever a time when you just call it where it's like, you know what, we tried this, we did everything we could, but we're going to close our doors. What What is that point if somebody- yeah, When we had a lot of people that did that, it's like yeah. they just they just couldn't. And, you know, and then a lot of times, you know, I would tell people, if you're going to start a business, you need to make sure that you have at least- a, a year, a year and a half worth of savings that if something happens, you can still stay afloat, right? It's the same thing where somebody's wanting to quit their job to start a business and you're working on salary and now you want to quit your job because you want to start your business. You better have a good six year, months to a year of savings that's going to cover you until you get that thing off the, off the ground. Because if you think you're going to leave your job and start making money in your business the next month, you're not, and you're going to start suffering and what's going to happen because I can't do this. And there goes your dream. So it's the same thing applies to a business. You have to have a cushion to, to kind of carry you through that. And I think a lot of times what happened with the pandemic is a lot of people did not have that cushion and they had no resources. Now, some people were gone, honestly, Jenny, before they, before even the PPPs and the idle loans came out. I'm like, gosh, if they could have just stayed at two more weeks in business, we could have helped them. But they were just like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to, you know, and it's all it's it's within them. They know they know their I guess they know their strengths and they know their weaknesses and they know there's no way I can do it. And sometimes they think they know and maybe they maybe they don't know what they what they could have done if they just stayed in it. But, yeah. it, you know, and everybody has their own situation. We don't know the situations, but we did lose some business, but it gets to the point where, where is it uncomfortable? And I'm getting very close to not being comfortable anymore, you know, but um, yeah, we yeah. were able to help a lot of people. Even, even we got selected by the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce as only one of six regions in, or cities actually, in the whole country, okay, one of six. And it was, uh, they, uh, they had a partner with Rumba Meats and I can't remember the other company that's like the parent company, and they gave out money to these six chambers to distribute to their small businesses. And we were one of them. And we were able to give out $1,500 grants. Um, well, actually we gave 13 and two of them got 1500 because two of them were restaurants. And that was one of them um, that got the $1,500. $1, and when I first heard about that, I thought, thousand dollars what's a thousand dollars going to do for them if they've got all this stuff you wouldn't believe the the people that came and said oh my gosh you have no idea what that thousand dollar meant for us and that's what made me realize oh my gosh they're really hurting for 500 and a thousand every 500 every thousand dollar they got here and there was it was important to them and and that particular restaurant got fifteen hundred dollars and they i'm sure like i said they got from other places but there were there was a lot of struggle, a lot was of struggle. It, yeah, and I'm sure that they were glad to be a, a member during that time. Now, listen, hopefully we won't ever have to go through what we went through during that time. Hopefully that was, you know, they say it's supposed to be like a once in a lifetime kind of thing. But is that something that the chamber helped people to navigate? Because applying for those, like, you know, we've never done that before. We've never applied for those types of loans yeah. before. That's what we did. And in fact, people thought, oh, you're not going to be working any because we're we're sheltering from home. Oh, not not true. We work more hours from home during that pandemic than we work in the office every day. It was crazy, but we took it to helping these people. We were identifying the members that we knew needed help. We were sending out newsletters every week about what's available and what's coming and webinars. I would sit through seven to eight webinars a day because there was so much between the United States Hispanic, between the United, United States Hispanic and the United Chamber. And then you had the SBA, and then you had the governor's office, and then you had the uh, Clay Jenkins office. And then you had, I mean, oh my gosh. And every one of them had something to offer. And we just had to, you know, reach out to everybody and say, here's an opportunity. We had grants from Ford for Mujeres. We had grants from, um, other companies that were just reaching out and saying we want to give this to specific areas 
And yeah, we were able to give quite a bit of money, but it was, like you said, it was very difficult because they've never done it before and it was hard to navigate through it. And if you're not real literate with all the, the junk, junk that comes in those emails, so you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't handle this. So we're walking them through the processes of what to do. Uh, and that's what we found, like I said, last week, where we had the gentleman who owned the company that he'd run for 15 years and never found out that he never changed the name. And so 15 years, he ran this company, think it was his, and it belonged to the guy he had bought it from. So those are the things we ran into. We ran into people saying, I don't know where my financials, I don't know what my financials are. I said, who who does your taxes? Mi esposa, my wife, my son, you know, just like whoever. And so there was a lot, and that's that's when we really, you know, buckled down is that we've got to get some help for these people. And that's when we created the North Lake College course for them. And that's when we opened up the resource center. And that's when we said, you know, this is what we can do to help. Well, I was definitely sold on Chambers last week, but this, you know, hearing this, it really solidifies it even more. Oh my gosh, what, a, what an impactful hour. If you would like to, oh my, don't mind the noise over here. If you would like to let us know, uh, which email address you would like people to contact you at if they have more questions or want to get involved or or even if you just want to go to the chamber website that's fine too yeah you want to, you want me to give it to you it's mary n m a r y a n n mm -hmm. dot kellum k e l l a m but i am latina mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. irving h is in hispanic c c dot com irving h c c dot com Marianne, thank you. You were amazing. And thank you, Jenny. You're welcome. I loved it. So anybody that needs any help, we're here. And uh, email me. I'll send you information on where we're located. And you're welcome to come visit with us. If, if anything, just to chat and find out if you know if you're ready for something. Absolutely. And you guys, don't forget, save the date. Stair National's annual conference, creating gateways to economic equity, May 10th in Plano, Texas at the Hilton Dallas Plano Granite Park. I better see you there. All right, I will also see you all. Yes, good. I will also see you next week, same time, same place. Bye everybody.